Welcome back to TV Toastmasters. I'm your host, Eric Bergman. And if you're like me, you love a good road trip. And you know, sometimes a road trip can change a person's life. Today, we're going to hear the story of one Toastmaster who turned his love of travel into a mail order business. Now, John Campbell is a true gearhead. He's loved to work on his own cars ever since he learned to drive. And together, inspired by a friend that he went on a road trip with, they turned that trip into a business that makes custom parts so that you can travel overland and carry everything you need for a great road trip. John is the owner of Overland Equipped, and he's here today to talk about his business, and he's also a member of We Toasted Toastmasters with me in Lake Oswego. So let's welcome John Campbell. Hi, Eric. Thanks for having me. John, it's so great to have you. It's, it's great that you can come talk about your business and your success and along the way how Toastmasters helped you get to where you are today. Now let's talk about the name of your company. It's Overland Equipped, but what does Overland mean to you for travel? Yeah, thanks for that, Eric. Overlanding is really just car camping on steroids. Everyone's fairly familiar with car camping. You know, you load up your vehicle with everything you need, your tents, your sleeping bags, your various items for cooking and just hanging out and having a good time. But in overlanding, you take that, you take your vehicle and you lift it, you put way bigger tires on it, and you equip it so you can go in the middle of nowhere and be absolutely off the grid and completely self-sufficient. So it takes car camping to the next level, really. All right. And, and what year did you start your company, John? The business was started back in 2016. So you've been at it a few years now. That's great. Yes, we have. And now you, you began your love affair with cars at a young age. How did that come about? It was this a family thing that you did with your father, for instance? Absolutely, absolutely. My dad was a gearhead. He's actually a airline pilot. He, he's a corporate pilot that flies uh, on this, for a business that is out of California. And he started out being a mechanic. So he began by turning wrenches. So he definitely has the love or wrenching and it was passed on to me. The way it initially started was with my first car. It was a 1988 Chevy Camaro. And I know you're saying, ooh, uh, no. <laughs> it was a cherry bomb. It was, it was a hunk of junk, but I was very proud of it because it was my hunk of junk. And me and my dad had to spend many hours working on that thing to keep it alive. It was notorious for failing the major components needed to keep a car moving down the road. So there was times that it was in our garage with the transmission pulled out, putting a new clutch in to keep it on the road. Uh, a heater core blew out so I would have coolant on the floorboards as I was driving around. It was an absolute, just a basket case, but it gave us a great chance for me and my father to bond and for him to be able to pass down all of his gearhead wisdom. And that's where it all began really. All right. And as the years went on, no doubt you got much better vehicles, but you still wanted to make them your own. So tell us a little bit more about the road trip that you took with your friend. How did that come about? What did you, where did you go? And what kind of parts were you putting on your rigs that made you think you could start a business? That's right. So it, we dubbed it The Big Journey. This was back in 2016, so it was actually the year that we started the business. It was in August, and we had this grand plan of traveling all around the, some of the western United States to cover a bunch of the major national parks, and we wanted to move around a lot, visit a lot of different areas, which that requires a lot of gear because we wanted to be completely self-sufficient and be camping off the grid as much as possible. So we realized you can only fit so much gear into a vehicle. And my co-partner that helped found the business had a forerunner. And on the back of this forerunner had a cargo ladder, which was originally intended to allow you to climb up to the top of the vehicle to open up your rooftop tent. 
uh, re we realized that once the vehicle was completely full of gear, that this ladder was an area that we could utilize to shove more gear onto it. <laughs> but there was nothing on the market that allowed us to do that. And me taking my gearhead background and fabrication skills, we came up with a couple of ideas to make putting more gear on that ladder possible. And I actually have them here. I can show you, Eric. Sure, John. Why don't you hold those up so that people know what we're talking about? Yeah, happy to. So what we have here, this is a Rotopax. This allows you to store additional gas on your vehicle. Now, it comes with a mount, but there was no easy way to be able to mount it to a ladder. So the business came up with an idea of this circular plate in these bushings that allow you to clamp this onto that ladder. So it's secure, but it still allows you easy access for more gas when you're out on the trail and you run out, which you typically do. <laughs> so now that we have this gas pack on, the ladder is no longer useful anymore because it's blocking your access up the ladder. So we then evolved further into another product that we take the ladder and we bolt this additional step onto the side of the ladder. So you have your Rotopax pack here and then the ladder step on the side. And most people buy at least one, sometimes two or even three of these steps and put them on the ladder. So you can fill the ladder full of gear, but then you can still use these steps to be able to make it to the top of your roof. A guy can never have too much gear strapped onto his truck, right, John? <laughs> That's right. Couldn't agree more. All right. That is so great. Now, there are so many auto parts suppliers in the world. What was it that gave you the confidence to think that you could bring something new that all these other companies hadn't thought about or hadn't been making available? Mm -hmm. So overlanding has been a long, around for a long time, but it's really been gaining popularity recently, especially when the COVID uh, pandemic hit. People are wanting to get away from other people. And we just found that there wasn't really any of the big auto parts manufacturers bringing these kind of parts to market. And we realized it was a fairly niche category, but there was definitely demand for it. And when we took these parts out on the road and tried them for ourselves firsthand and realized how handy they are and how well they work, that's when the idea of the business came up and we decided to, to bring these parts to the market. So you had these two products, both, both attaching to your truck ladders that were, that were there and you tested before, and, and then you came back and they had worked so well you wanted to sell them to other people. Is that basically it? That's it. And, and since then you've added some other products that I guess, uh, I'm not right in saying they go under the hood for the electrical systems? That's correct, that's you correct, have, Eric. You have one of those to show us. I do. So the idea behind this is it gives you an additional safe source of electricity for all of the different accessories that you add when you're overlanding. So typically overlanders like to have a lot of extra lights to be able to light the way. And you run out of space for running these wires up to the battery. What this allows you to do is it gives you a breaker to safely protect all of the power that's coming into the part and a bunch, of, a bunch of various different locations to safely wire up different accessories. And it comes on this aluminum bracket that is specifically engineered and built to fit your specific vehicle. So for example, this one is for a third generation Toyota Tacoma. So we spend time making sure that everything fits really well, it bolts in super easy, and is just real easy to install and get all of your accessories safely wired up. Wow, that's great. And you're, you're making products, the, those electrical products are specifically for various types of Toyota trucks or SUVs, correct? That's right. Yeah, every one of the brackets, it'll fit a, a range of different vehicles within that specific generation, but we want to make sure that they fit super well and are very easy to bolt in. So they're definitely uh, vehicle specific. All right, that's really cool. So you're helping people add even more accessories on, on their rigs. That's right. All right. Now let's see, when, what is it about a road trip that's the best for you? Do you like the scenery, the freedom, the friendship, all of the above? What is the draw for you? 
Typically, I would have to say it's definitely the friendship and the freedom. So most of the times when you go out overlanding, it's recommended that you don't go by yourself with one vehicle. Because a lot of the times, some of the areas that you get into can get a little hairy, and it's nice to be able to have another vehicle there with you to help you pull out in case you get stuck somewhere. So it's great to have the friend there with you to provide that assistance. And it's also just great to go out with your friends and be able to be out in nature, off the grid, and totally really alone by yourselves in a particular area. And that's where the freedom comes in because you can be out in the middle of nowhere, be totally self-sufficient, not need anything because you have everything that you need in your vehicle with you, ready to go. All right, I, I hear what you say about don't go alone. My brother and I were on a road trip this summer on two consecutive days, we had failure to start our rigs. First time it was his, it was a bad ground wire to the starter. And for mm -hmm. mine, the second day, I needed a new battery. So thank goodness I was in a city at that time. So don't go alone. Well, it's time for us to take a short break we're going to be back with a lot more TV Toastmasters talking with John Campbell about his company, Overland Equipped, and the products they make, as well as why John's in Toastmasters and what he's gained from it. So we'll take a short break, and we'll see you again. I joined Toastmasters to improve my speaking, listening, communication, and leadership skills. Toastmasters gave me incredible confidence. 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 Great listening skills. Poise. Great leadership skills. Leadership skills. The ability to speak in public. Strength. A captive audience. Quality feedback from the more experienced Toastmasters. Toastmasters really helped me improve my listening skills. Sales skills opportunities to go to different groups and widen my whole horizon. Toastmasters has given me a better, a more focused me, and I'm a much better listener. Toastmasters is fulfilling. It's a great place to fail your way to success. Wonderful way to meet people. Networking. Strength. It's addictive. It's a club of self-improvement. It's an experience, it's a ride that you won't forget and you'll enjoy it every step of the way. Toastmasters helped me land a kick butt job. I sang at one of my table topic speeches and people liked it and applauded. My business is doing great and I'm very, very grateful to Toastmasters. It's been a great experience for me. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you, Toastmasters, for giving me so much confidence. Thank you, Toastmasters, for everything. Welcome back to TV Toastmasters. I'm Eric Bergman, and I'm talking with John Campbell. He's the owner of Overland Equipped. It's a company that makes custom parts to make your 4x4 or truck a much better rig for taking that big road trip. Now, John, you, you were becoming an entrepreneur back in 2016. What was, what was the biggest obstacle you faced at the start? What was it that you had to overcome just to get going? Yeah, that's a great question, Eric. Luckily, when I started with my co-partner, uh, Matt Canal, he had started other businesses before. So we went into this business having his strong background of understanding the, the building blocks of starting a small business. Uh, one of the main things that I had to overcome really was just the confidence. You know, I had never done anything like this before. So it was the confidence in myself of understanding that, hey, little John Campbell came up with this idea and now him and his buddy are going to go sell it to other people. And one of the best ways that I've figured out to build that confidence was through Toastmasters. You know, I sat down and did a lot of self-evaluation and realized if you are going to own a company, you have to be very comfortable in speaking with all different kinds of people in all different kinds of situations and circumstances. And Toastmastered is, is so well-renowned for helping people with their public speaking that I knew that that was my first stop, was to join a Toastmasters group. And it has really paid dividends. It's, I am so much more comfortable now, not only in my day job professionally, where I have to give presentations to clients in different circumstances, in person, online, and different audiences, you know, anywhere from C-level groups, board members, just down to your, your basic, you know, marketing manager, but 
it has really been beneficial in helping me be really way more comfortable in speaking in front of an audience. Right. Oh, that's so great to hear. I know you, you joined our club in 2018, I believe, but you had already been in a, at a previous club in a different location. So what, what is it that keeps you in Toastmasters? Is it just the practice, the, the reinforcement of the lessons you're learning? I would say initially, yes. You know, it's all about repetition. The more you do something, the more comfortable you are at it and the better you become at it, really. But after I joined We Toasted, it's really been a great way to connect with other people, too, especially in this time of COVID when interactions can be limited because we're not able to get out as much. Being online and doing Toastmasters online has actually been really great to be able to connect with a, a pretty steady group of really great individuals. So the fellowship through Toastmasters, as well as just being able to hone my skills and keep practicing and becoming more and more confident in my speaking in different situations, in different circumstances, uh, which is another great reason why I love the Pathways, because it, it gives you such a solid foundation in a really well-organized, laid-out framework on how to practice uh, and get that repetition in different circumstances, different things to focus on for each of the different speeches that you have to do in the Pathway. Right, and Pathways is the Toastmasters education program that each one of us is, is signed up in, and we, we complete five different levels uh, building up, building our skills as we go and improving all along the way. Now, you, you've, you've said that you, you, ha you have the company tagline and it's on your t-shirt. Your journey is the destination. Tell us how you came up with that and what does that mean to you? Yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's a colloquialism that's been out there and around, but when we happened upon with the name of Overland Equipped, you know, it's really about the journey. So you're thinking, okay, I want to go out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, getting to the middle of nowhere is great. But when you have to be challenged in such a difficult manner to navigate all these different kinds of trails, the journey really does become part of the destination. So that's kind of why we thought it was so fitting with what we were trying to portray as the brand Overland Equipped, that when you outfit your rig and spend all this time and all this money in being able to get to somewhere, it really is, the journey is part of the destination. Now, of course, some of the best road trip stories happen when something goes wrong, like your car breaks down, you get lost, the weather turns terrible, something you didn't expect and couldn't control, it, it suddenly has given you a big change of plans. What kind of story do you have about a time when it looked like uh, all hope was lost, and then somehow you, you saved it and got back on track. Yeah, I have a really great example of this. It was Memorial Day weekend uh, a number of years ago, and it was me and my business partner and another two or three other vehicles, and we had spent all kinds of time online in our different map programs figuring out this really isolated location that we were going to get to to spend Memorial Day weekend. So we thought we had everything planned to the T. So we get out into this area. It was about 6 p.m. on Thursday evening of Memorial Day weekend. And we happened upon a locked gate that blocked the only way into this very isolated area. And it was at the very beginning of this trail. So we were completely out of luck. Any of the area around us wasn't suitable for the number of people that we had. So we resorted to heading to established campgrounds with the fingers crossed hope that we would be able to find a spot. And of course, because it's Memorial Day weekend, everyone at the front gate of these campgrounds more or less laughed us out of the area <laughs> saying, there's no way we have spots for five of these big, fully equipped vehicles. So we went to the first one, laughed out, went to the second one, big head shake, not even close to being enough room. Went to the third one, there wasn't even anybody working the gate because it was closed because it was full. So we happened upon the last area where there was a campground set next to a little fly fishing shop right on the river. And it looked like the owner of the fly shop was packing up and heading home for the night because by this time it was about in between eight and nine o'clock at night. 
my business partner, Matt, jumps out and he just has a knack for talking people, talking to people and connecting with them instantly. So he goes over to this owner and starts chatting him up. And before long, Matt comes walking back to the group of our vehicles with this big smile on his face. And he says, points over by the river and he says, that's where we're staying tonight, boys. So he convinced this owner to allow us to stay on his private property right next to the river for the night, no fees included, just wanted to sit down with us around the campfire and share a couple of uh, adult beverages, I'll say. <laughs> ah, that's right. Some of my best road trips have, have led to unexpected surprises, such as losing a transmission on a bus I was driving and, and having to stay in a small town in Montana, and the people there were just great. They even put on a picnic for us. <laughs> So what other road trips do you have in mind, John? Where do you want to take your rig next? I have a young family right now. Once they get a little bit older and a little bit more okay with spending extended amounts of time in a vehicle, I would really like to circumvent the whole uh, United States, starting here in the Pacific Northwest, go south through California, then head out down the southern states, then come up the East Coast, come back through the Midwest, mainly because I was uh, grew up in Wisconsin, and my wife and family have never been to Wisconsin or seen where I grew up. So that would definitely be a pit stop that we would make as we show the kids the all of the United States. And, and what about as you plan the next chapter in, in the life of your company? What's next for Overland Equipped? Yeah, so I've been slowly trying to grow the business organically, uh, maintaining some semblance of sanity with two young children, uh, a full-time day job, uh, and a loving wife that is very tolerant of all of these extracurricular activities that take up a lot of my time. Uh, so we'll keep growing it and see where it takes us. Eventually, you know, maybe 10 years down the road, it can become the full-time job where we'll branch out and pick up a retail location. So I have way to sell parts in person. I'd like to take all of the manufacturing of the parts, which are all manufactured locally here, which is fantastic, but I'd like to move all of that manufacturing in-house and buy all of the different various machinery that's needed to do that. So that way I could be in complete control of the quality, which is a big factor in, in the parts that I produce. I wanna make sure that they're very high quality and don't let people down when they're needed the most. Now, where can we find more information about your company online? What's the website to go to? Yeah, if you want to get some more information, just head on over to Overland Equipped, and it's spelled just like you see on the t-shirt here, overlandequipped.com, and that will give you a full rundown of the products and the benefits and the different types of vehicles that the products can go on. Well, John, thank you so much for being our guest today on TV Toastmasters. It's really wonderful to know of a Toastmaster who has taken those Toastmaster skills and helped build a business, built something that wasn't there before while he follows his passion and helps others pursue their passion. So we're at the end of another TV Toastmasters show. I'm your host, Eric Bergman. I hope you'll join us again for another session. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you and good night.